So many of you may know that I grew up in Minnesota, which is very close to Canada. And uh, I have to admit, there was a bit of a childhood, even lingering rivalry due to ice hockey competition between uh, Minnesota and folks here in Canada. And you know, when I come to Vancouver, once again, I'm learning that uh, Canada really is a great place. Uh, and then just to add insult to injury, uh, the government of British Columbia is also beating uh, us, it seems, in being open. Uh, and that's really what our next speaker is going to talk to us about. John Jordan is the executive director of British Columbia Digital Trust Service. Uh, he's an experienced product executive and technology strategist who has over 25 years of experience in both the private and public sector. Currently, he's leading the province of British Columbia's participation in the establishment of a trust layer for the internet. This includes teams that have made significant contributions to uh, open source projects, Hyperledger Ares, Hyperledger Indy, since the fall of 2017. Today, he's discussing how British Columbia is on a journey to putting open by default into practice. Please welcome to the stage, John Jordan. Hi everyone, I'm John. It's always a little exciting on these stages that I stop in time. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, being here and thanks for inviting me to speak. Um, first, I would like to do a, an acknowledgement. Um, as a visitor on this land, I would like us to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional Coast Salish territory of the Musqueam Squamish and tsleil nations. The land that we are on here that we know as British Columbia is home to over 200 First Nations with over 30 languages. And I hope that in some small way that the work we're doing today might be able to help in the reconciliation with First Nations, including you know, very important things like being able to have their name and their native language on government documents. I'd also like to uh, thank, you know, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the help of many, many people. Um, a little over three years, or a little under three years ago, I had an accident that damaged my spinal cord, which left me as a quadriplegic. And so the importance of people and community in helping me get here, and including you know, my family, friends, work colleagues, and people in the open source community has been really instrumental in uh, helping, uh, helping me get here and helping the work continue that we started. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the journey of British Columbia um, in the open source world. And this is work that uh, has been started by many colleagues prior to my arrival in British Columbia in 2016. Um, they noticed, and I think we all can notice that in large enterprises, you know, there's some challenges in delivering technology projects. Um, this little graph put together by a colleague of mine, Peter Watkins, kind of demonstrates that large projects in, in large firms tend to have a very long time frame before value is delivered, uh, hopefully. <laughs> and then over time, that value diminishes because these projects don't tend to get uh, maintenance and improve very often. So we wanted to try and improve this. And as we observed, you know, in the outside world, things moving more quickly. So what we wanted to be able to do is figure out how could we manage risk carefully, improve things, move at speed, and bring government technology programs closer to how industry does, does things and, and we're delivering value. So, what we did is we put together a number of different changes that allowed us to bring government closer to industry, decrease the barrier between working with government and making, uh, taking advantage of the latest in technology and capabilities. So we're gonna talk about the teams, the people, the policies we've put in place, uh, the way we procure technology and the tools. So first, the most important thing is how could we 
make sure that the people we have and the people we work with are using the latest and greatest tools and having the latest skills. So we actually had to create new job categories for things that you know you all recognize, product owners, scrum masters, user experience, developers, and so on and forth. We had to be able to describe what we wanted to hire. We also created a space that we know today as the Exchange Lab, where teams could come and practice being, uh, being modern digital service teams. So that's a place where uh, I started out in 2016, and now is a, is a dedicated space where hundreds of teams have come through and learned how to deliver products in a, in a timely and continuous delivery fashion. Next, we put into place a whole bunch of policies that changed how we view technology and how we put it into place to deliver value. And today, the main one we're talking about is working in the open. So how could we collaborate, co-design, and build technology solutions that deliver value for British Columbians and do that in a way that is open? So we adopted the, the Apache 2.0 license, and we encourage teams to develop in the open as much as possible. Of course, we're also very keen on open standards and interoperable standards as well as open source code. Next, we had to figure out how we could procure work with uh, the best in the industry and procure their services so that we could uh, take advantage of, of the skills that are outside of the government. Um, so we put into place some very uh, new and innovative procurement methods, three different methods. Code with us is kind of like a bounty. So we, if we could well describe a problem, um, we could go up to $70,000. We post that on our uh, digital marketplace website. People bid on it. It takes a couple of days to evaluate. And within a week, we can go from posting an RFP or a, a, a Code with us request to awarding the contract and working with that person or small team. Um, once that code is merged, they get paid. We also have the ability to uh, hire an individual or hire a, all or part of a, of a sprint team. Uh, so far, since this program has been put into place around 2017, we've uh, procured $33 million worth of code with us people and sprint with us teams. And finally, the tools. We needed to use the tools that a lot of you folks have built and maintained over the years because this is how we understand how to deliver value in a continuous improvement, continuous delivery uh, way. So, for example, the government of British Columbia was an early adopter of OpenShift, and we run a private cloud today with thousands of applications being updated and Deliver, you know, delivered uh, continuously. So thanks to all of you, we're able to take advantage of these tools and contribute to these tools to deliver value for our citizens. So what's the evidence of success? Um, today we have over 1,500 repositories in the open, 200 teams, 1,400 people working, delivering code in the open. At the bottom there, the Aries Cloud Agent, which is a project that my team started and delivered in the Hyperledger world, has over 50 million pulls in Docker Hub. Uh, our last release had 32 contributors, 16 of them new. So we're quite proud of that. So next, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the project that I've been delivering that's building on the ability of the government of British Columbia to deliver online services in a safe and secure way. We, we recognize that if we want to really have a modern digital economy, we've got to move beyond taking pictures of driver's licenses and passports and uploading them to websites. That doesn't seem like the best way to uh, have a secure, safe digital economy. Um, British Columbia really cares about privacy secure, privacy enabling um, digital solutions and we changed our legislation to support a digital identity program back in 2010, and today we have over 2 million residents enrolled in a high assurance digital identity program that our digital trust program is leveraging. Um, 
in order to deliver this program and we are heavily involved in the open source community. So we are major contributors to Hyperledger. We've delivered millions of dollars worth of open source code. Every line of code that we've developed in this space is in the open. Uh, we have over 13 maintainers in a variety of projects in, in the Hyperledger world. We're participants in DIFF where we deliver, um, we, we co-develop standards. And uh, we also helped found the Trust Over IP Foundation, which I am the chair of the steering committee, where we work on the overall framework for digital trust, including governance and technology. And we're developing uh, what we call a trust spanning layer, which you can kind of think of as the, uh, the protocols that allow people to communicate with each other or with entities that are secure and without central uh, con um, in a peer-to-peer -peer manner, similar to the way IP allows you to connect machines. And finally, we are uh, we're, um, I think we have some exciting things to look forward to with the recently announced Open Wallet Foundation. Um, in my own team, we've, put the, we've used the code with us numerous times. Some of these companies, we actually helped get them off the ground with Code With Us awards. We've used almost half a million dollars worth of code with us. Again, putting all of that into the open. Next, I'd like to uh, share with you a few videos that um, put into, that um, our partners will, sorry, that um, they will demonstrate how our partners are, are using our technology to deliver value. I'm Nate Eamon Blake, Assistant Deputy Minister with the Ministry of Energy Mines, Low Carbon Innovation with the Government of BC. As a leader in climate innovation, the Government of BC knows that digital solutions are essential in our collective work towards provincial, national and international climate and sustainability goals. Organizations worldwide have shown an interest in a better way to share and track sustainability data. And we know that digital trust technology has the capacity to accomplish this. BC's Energy and Mines Digital Trust Pilot Project coordinates a digital ecosystem between the provincial government, natural resource companies, and organizations around the world, enabling the exchange of verified sustainability data in the form of digital credentials. Digital credentials protect data online, are verified in real time, and will simplify reporting processes. This will facilitate a highly scalable model for the international trade of sustainably produced materials. I am Thomas Campioni, Director of Information Technology at the Law Society of British Columbia. Lawyers are busy and work hard, so any opportunity to save them time and effort is important. We are excited to be part of a pilot project that allows lawyers to access court materials remotely using new digital services from the government of British Columbia. We do this by issuing them with a digital member card, verifying the Law Society membership and more recently, a personal digital credential from the government verifying their identity. The credential is stored on a smartphone, providing online access to court materials in a single step. Using this credential, lawyers can now obtain court materials without having to obtain copies from the court registries, saving time and money. Perhaps even more important, the ability of lawyers to safely and securely identify themselves online creates the opportunity to create more efficient and cost-effective interaction with the courts and government services. We're hopeful that even more lawyers will take up the opportunity, make use of the digital credential, and that there will be more online services available to the legal profession in the future. My name is Ty Keeley, Chief Technology Officer at the City of Vancouver. Here at the City, we're always looking for ways to improve how we deliver user-friendly digital services to our residents and businesses. Recently, when we looked for ways to reduce the number of manual steps for people when they apply for a new business license with us, we came across the BC government's Orgbook BC service. By using this service in our online application forms, we were able to make it easier for the applicant to enter valid, verifiable and accurate information about their business. This also saves us time on the City staff side as we no longer have to spend time manually verifying a business's information because we know that it's come from a trusted source in Orgbook BC. 
Throughout the design of the new application, we worked with the Digital Trust team to improve the features of the service, and we now hope to build a collaborative roadmap with the BC government team to expand how we use the Digital Trust ecosystem and find even more efficiencies for staff and members of our public. Great, so I hope you can see how these different sectors are benefiting from this technology today. We're very excited to continue working with people here and around the world in this technology. Um, today we offer these three services. We have Orgbook BC, which you saw, which contains every legal entity and a number of permits and licenses. It's an open search API and it allows um, permitting services to get into the game of issuing verifiable credentials. Next in the center, we have BC Wallet, which is in app stores today, and is being used by lawyers to obtain their lawyer credential and their person credential, which is derived from our High Assurance Digital Identity Program. Um, you can also download that today. There'll be a QR code at the end of the talk, uh, and you can try it out with our BC Showcase, which allows you to be a, a student, or a lawyer or simulate that experience. All of this is, of course, open source code available today through the Hyperledger projects. I have colleagues here that are giving talks. You missed an exciting one yesterday on the uh, BC wallet with Aries Bifold, but if you check in with Clesio or Akif around here, you'll be able to learn more. My colleague Stephen will be talking at 11 on the math behind zero knowledge proof credentials at 11 and my colleagues Kyle and Aaron, I can't remember the time, but they'll be talking about the Energy Minds project a little later today. And we also offer enterprise services using Aries Cloud Agent Python for all of our ministries to be able to issue and verify credentials. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll let you get on to the rest of the day. If we just show the last slide, we can, uh, you know, if you want, you can uh, check out the BC Digital Trust website learn more about this, there's links to the projects in GitHub, and you can download the wallet and try it out and showcase. So thanks very much. Hope you have a great day. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around. John, thank you so much. First of all, it is so impressive what you're doing. Uh, you know, I've been working in open source a long time and have talked to governments all over the world. And, and many of them will tell me, well, we're not even sure we want to use open source, right? They're that far behind. You've completely flipped the script. You're not only using open source, the whole procurement model is around an open community with code with us that is just so amazing and it's all open by default. I mean, I hope you're sharing this with other governments around the world. We are uh, doing our best to do that, and uh, you know, code is a public good, and especially in this area, I think it's really important that we have open source code so that we can trust the interactions we have online. So, yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm just truly impressed. I mean, it is probably the greatest uh, government open source success story uh, in the world. So, again, John, thank you. Well, so thanks much. for having me. And Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.